Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, before we start this episode, we are very proud and excited uh, to announce that we have our first sponsor and partner on board. Um, so yes, for us to continue creating content, we hope that uh, you can support or at least check them out. Uh, we only choose sponsors that align with our brand and ensures that there's value to you. Okay, so uh, working with a gentleman called Kelvin Lim, he's the founder of Epic Mind Learning Loft. It is a tuition center that has been running for 17 years that focuses not just on grades, but also on character as well. And they have built a culture where it really like, is like family. La. So if you have someone that values relationships that don't want to just go to tuition to just study and do well, but you want to get good grades and also improve your character and relationships, I think this is something that you might possibly want to check out. Okay, we are having a promotion. So you get a free trial lesson if you code RWR10. So that's hashtag RWR10. You get a free trial as well as 10% off um, the first term. So yes, we are putting the links down below. Uh, do drop them a DM or even a direct message or call them to inquire more about their services. Or if you want more information, you can check out the previous sponsored podcast where I interview Kelvin and his motivations and how he runs his center. Okay, with that, let's get straight into the podcast today. Welcome back to Mindset Hacks, a segment of the podcast where we give you perspectives and practical tips to raise your resilience, mindset, and mental wellness. On this episode, Ida is temporarily replaced uh, with, with a friend, Andrew Raphael. Hi, Andrew. Hey, hi. Yeah, I mean, I'm so I'm so glad to have you here. Let me just do a quick introduction sure. of you for the guests. Uh, yep. You know, we, we are going to talk about a very relevant topic. I put it up on Instagram stories and a lot of responses to it. It seems that uh, rumination, if you, have heard, if you haven't heard of this word before, it's okay. It just means <laughs> dwelling on a past event, thinking about a past event repeatedly with a negative outcome. I think some of us do that more often than not. Uh, so in this episode, uh, Andrew mm. has a massive... Massive heart for people. He has a degree in psychology. He's doing his master's now. He's going to be a clinical psychologist in training. And beyond just his studies, right, he has a wealth of experience uh, in counseling as well as uh, working with you for a lengthy period of time. You know, he's very well loved by his students because of his passion and enthusiasm. Um, so, yes, <laughs> nice to have you here, Andrew. Thank you for the amazing intro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, because I, I posted, I, I, I see I was gonna I was gonna invite you, I posted on stories. I think someone re- texted me on stories and said, Hey, you know, I know him, he's amazing. Oh it was Zina. Oh <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm just doing a clubhouse event with her today. Oh Zina, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Small yeah. One. Great. So I think it was <laughs> Tribe, right? Yes, yes. So Tribe was an organization I used to work with. Yeah. And uh it was wow, it's like when that was like 2016 to 2018 then. Sure. Suzina was someone that one of our volunteers. Fantastic. I think you have both research perspective as well as a personalized anecdotal experience. So I, I couldn't have thought of a best better person to talk about this. That's why I asked you here. Yeah. Uh and and uh, just a little bit of small talk. Well, usually mindset hacks, we go very deep into a topic. Yeah. Right. But I, I still want to give audience a little bit of background to who you are and everything. Yeah. Uh, my personal experience with you, I think I just met you one. This is the first time I'm meeting in person. That's right. Right. Yeah. We met on Zoom once. I think that was very left a very deep impression on me. Uh you mentioned that you went overseas to uh study yep. a little bit. And the scene in mental health there and the way they treat psychology as well as the mind, yeah. it's very different. Yeah. And you, you wanted to kind of create a culture here where we're more progressive in that yeah. sense. Could you share more about, especially about incident about the beach? I think that left oh. me, that <laughs> left a very, maybe you can share the audience a little bit. Sure, yeah. sure. So I think like one of the things I always felt about, uh, I think Singapore is progressing. Yeah. Uh, it's just that in all honesty, I think, still think like there's a long way to go with it, right? right. Uh, but one of the things that really like, like what you said was what left me was a huge yeah. impression. Uh, was when I was actually at the beach in uh, Wollongong. Sure. And I saw this like elderly man and this younger man just chilling right. out at the beachside. So me being the capo that I am, I was like, hey, I just want to find out what's happening, right? So I kind of sure, like sure. turn off my, uh, you know, my Bluetooth uh, earpiece. I was just like running closer to them, figuring out what's happening. Right. And what I realized was actually like they were doing therapy right by the beach, right? Mm. And what was happening was it was talking about a concept of loss, like right. a sense of loss. Someone has passed away sure. and how we have a lot of like negative feelings associated with it and mm. how sometimes we the feelings come just like the waves yeah and how we kind of like don't try to 
push it back. Right. But also when the waves are going back to the sea, sure. you don't try to hold on to it as well. That's amazing. So just the using the, you know, the what's happening in nature or just what's happening out there yeah. and really bring it to very personal relevance to that person right there. That just blew my mind. And I was like, oh my gosh, like there's so much we can do. Yeah. Like it is amazing that we're not doing the Hollywood version of sitting in this weird chair. <laughs> and then I'm uh, going to yeah, tell yeah. you like, oh my God, you know, I'll just use this weird thing. And then sure. I'm going to do hypnotherapy. But it's moving on to more like, no, I really want to understand you as a person and find out what's happening in your life yeah. and see how I can journey with you. Yeah. And I think that's how mental health should be. Sure. No, I love that. You know, I, wow, I mean, I'm speechless because I think you mentioned it. I heard it the first time. Yeah. But when I, met, when I hear it again, because we are going to talk a little bit about flow, moving on, not suppressing your thoughts. Yeah. So in some sense, later on, we might go back to that, especially when sure. it comes to rumination. Yeah. So I just, wow, it's just a very good segue or lead into the yeah. podcast today. Uh, so we are going to talk about, uh, just to give a brief outline for you all, we are going to talk about uh, rumination. Okay, what mm. is it exactly? Uh, why does it happen maybe and what are the consequences? And then most of the time you spend on the solutions, uh, which is I guess what you guys want to know about. Especially if you're like me, uh, not, not so much, but in the past I used to ruminate a lot. Mm. I think it's a, it's a because of my perfectionism. We'll yeah. talk about that a bit. Okay, so so let's go straight into it. Uh, let's start with what is rumination and the consequences. Yeah, so what is yeah. rumination? So I think, think of, I would say like, Everything to do with mental health is yeah. kind of like a continuum. Sure. Right? It's not a dichotomous thing. So rumination is actually thinking gone bad. I just okay. put it a really like layman term. So what I mean by that is that we all think, we all reflect. Right. And that's fine. But if I constantly think to the point or if I reflect to the point where it's affecting me. Sure. And when I mean by affecting me, it's affecting me in terms of like the way I do my life, right. my work, my relationship. Uh, that's called rumination because it's constantly happening. Okay. So it's kind of like a, think of it like a cycle where you keep on thinking about something sure. to, and that thinking is not benefiting you, mm. but that thinking is actually affecting you negatively. Okay. That's when I would say uh, that's a, a good clear sign to be like, oh, that could possibly be a rumination. Sure. That's, mm. a, that's, a, that's a really good summary for everybody to understand because <laughs> yeah, the way you put it, it's so much, <laughs> so much passion. Uh, there's another technical definition for rumination. It's cow chewing cut. <laughs> it's okay. yeah, yeah. So if you look up no, rumination, actually yeah. cows regurgitating and chewing cut oh. repeatedly. <laughs> so maybe there is some resemblance to you know ruminating thoughts because it's repeated and like you said, it is a um, kind of maladaptive form of reflection. Yeah, where we have ability to reflect as human beings. Yeah, but when we do it too much, it becomes like you said negative. That becomes rumination. Right. I do want to quote. Uh, I think you might know this person, Susan Nolan Huxo mm. Huxima. Uh, just to give her a bit of credit, she's like the kind of like American professor of psychology at Yale University. She passed away already. Mm -hmm. But she was the one that really delved deep into rumination yeah. and really found out a lot about it. Um, and I want to just mention here, and, and I guess you can also second this or let me know if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that uh, she mentions that it's a form of responding to distress by repeatedly and passively focusing on the meaning, causes, and consequences of one's depressive symptoms rather than actively working to a solution. And she said, I mean, her body of research focuses a lot on that. There's a strong connection between rumination and clinical depression. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I guess it's fair to say that. Yeah, because like, I mean, if you think about it, right, like if I'm going to constantly think about something yeah. that is negative and if I'm going to do that day in, day out on a constant basis, Okay. And if you look at depression as well, which is kind of like in a place where you have like low self-esteem and there's just so much that's happening. Sure. There's also the negative realm. It's highly connected in that sense. Sure. Um, also interesting to note, I think I, I listened to a podcast on like OCD. Mm. I think it's dedicated to OCD. I think it's a psychologist that's doing it. Yeah. Um, he was saying that, he quoted this that I found interesting, that he, he wanted to separate rumination from intrusive thoughts. Right? So intrusive thoughts are thoughts that come in. He said that thinking... Is the thinking doing you or are you doing the thinking? Mm. So in he, his claim was that intrusive thoughts, the thinking is doing you, whereas in rumination, it's a form of compulsion. Like you compulsively think about something yeah. which has to stop. La. His uh, point is that you have to stop it. If not, it's going to cause issues with that. Okay. So I thought that, that was an interesting distinction for audience because to kind of separate between thoughts that just come in along the way as yeah. well as rumination where you are thinking about the past uh, but that's on a transition into the next one, which is yeah. why do we ruminate? Mm. 
So I think why do we ruminate a lot of times is we talk about uh, the what ifs. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> it's like, I wish I could have done something more different. Yep. I wish I had a better consequence altogether. That could be one aspect of it. Um, and I think uh, even I'm guilty of that. Like mm. something goes wrong, uh, like just similar to you, I'm like a perfectionist. So to me, it's like when something does not happen the way I want it to happen, which is like 99% of the time anyways, yeah. um, I tend to be like, oh no, what if I've done it this way? What if I've done that way? So that could be one aspect. But I think another aspect also is that a lot of time is, it's a safe space. Mm. Mm. So what I mean by that is that when people tend to ruminate is because they felt like, like whatever situation they were in the past, sure. that felt safe for them. Okay. And now when they're in the present, it's kind of scary because you're not sure what's happening. And, and it kind of like always feels like I knew what happened in the past. I was in control of the situation. So when I think about it, it gives a sense of safety and security at times. Mm. Because I'm not looking so much into the present right now, which I'm not sure. And the future is definitely scary because I have no idea what's going to happen. Sure. So what gives me comfort is what I know. Right. And what I know is right here. So wow. sometimes ruminating could be also going back to that place in the past and being there. Right. Sense. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's a perspective that I did not consider. Mm. But I know that yes, past like you know because I for me especially as a perfectionist, right? I always think back, especially as younger playing tennis, right? I always think back about what could have been. Yeah. And you you stay there and it really sucks because you dwell on it so long and you're trying to find a conclusion in your mind. But in some sense, you're not happy about the present. Mm. So that one, I think most of you might be familiar with that. Mm. But the fact that you mentioned that some people do that because of comfort. Mm. that it's a comfortable place to do. I, mm. I, I never actually considered that as well. Like, wow. Okay. So, uh, is that good? Is that good to live in the memory of the past? Because what's the difference between that and reminiscing then? Yeah. Yeah. It's reminiscing technically is okay, right? But what's the difference between that? Yeah. Great question, Kevin. I think for reminiscence, what we do is we kind mm. of like remember, okay. we kind of reflect the, the good and the bad sure. in a sense. But when you keep on ruminating about the past, What's happening is you're no longer living in the present. Okay. Right? So think of it, reminiscence as I'm living in the present and I'm taking a short trip down memory lane. Okay. Whereas ruminating is present, hold up, future, no go. I'm going to now take my bags and live in the past. Okay. Sure, sure. So it's like in a way, a cop out to kind of face reality. Yeah. So it's kind of, like, kind of like, are you taking a short trip down memory lane or are you planning to live in the past? Okay. Got it. Yep. I love that. I love that distinction. The way you put things so simply. Uh, for people to understand. Uh, let's see if I can explore this a little bit further. Is there anything that predisposes people to rumination? In simple words, is there anything like personality traits that causes people maybe to ruminate more? Mm, okay. Um, personality traits. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the things we know from research is there's this thing called the big five personality trait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I heard of it before. Yeah. yeah, so definitely one of them is, uh, they also call it the ocean, O-C-E-A-N. Yeah. N is for neurotism, uh, which okay. means like someone right. who is definitely has a lot of, yeah, negative thinking, yeah. Uh, okay. aspects of their life, lah. negative thinking, negative behavior. So definitely mm. someone who has that would tend to ruminate a bit more. Okay. You know, te- definitely have that. Um, I think just even moving from personality traits to even maybe like life experiences. Okay. I think it's a lot to do with people who also have like uh, gone through tough times in life mm. and are un- and have not learned how to reflect in a healthy manner. Sure, sure. That's, a, that's a really cool way of putting it because when I go to schools and I talk to students, they may not be prepared to reflect in a productive way. Yes. Right? And that is a skill, like whether it's journaling, whether it's writing, processing, all these is skills and not, not taught. Right. which are not that difficult, but it's not focused on. Uh, and that's why sometimes they just have a more adaptive way of reflecting on things. A lot uh, of times it's even learned experience, right? Yeah. So what I mean by that is, let's talk about maybe um, experience that they grew up with. Yeah. Maybe the people that they grew up with, their household, not to name anyone in particular, could also be le- saying that this is how to think sure. about problems or situations. Right. So right. they will learn that, they could have learned that, oh, then rumination is the way to go because that's what everybody around me is doing anyways. It's interesting. Yeah, it's learned behavior, right? Okay. Yeah, I think I think we really explored this. This is, this is a great. I, I would think also that perfectionists maybe would be more be more prone to it. Like yeah. for me, just my personal experience, like, wow, just a little bit off. Uh, I keep thinking about what could have done better. <laughs> it's right. uh crazy. Right. Even now, but back then it was worse. Back then it was almost everything that I did, projects, tennis, yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and I guess along the way I learned how to deal with it, which I guess we will talk about in a bit. 
But do you do you because you, when I put out the poll out there, uh, maybe you can edit this in lah. Right? I think it will edit this in that almost one third of people actually mentioned that they ruminate seven of, like so I put a scale. Yeah. Ten being ruminate the most. I think one third of people mentioned they ruminate seven to ten, which is a lot. Uh. Yep. And I think you were one of those that. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh yeah, that's me too. <laughs> right, yeah. So maybe I stay a little bit, a little bit about why you do that and um, maybe is there any personality that uh, causes that? Yeah, I think like this, like one talk about neurotism, another one is yeah. definitely like you brought up is being like a perfectionist as well. Yeah. Um, I think you could even just be like, and we talked about experiences as well, right? Sure. But I think a lot of time it really boiled it down to me is like, uh, how willing are we to accept what's happening in our life? Mm. If there was like one core personality trait, I really would say that how willing are we to accept what's happening in our life? Mm. Because some people are like, okay, this has happened. This sucks, but let's move on with what okay. we got. Then there's another group of people, which I'm one of them, which is sometimes I'm like, oh my God, this has happened. Why did I not do this better? I could have done this better. Now I need to kind of like make sure that, you know, instead, so instead of quickly going to like, okay, what can I do to make it better the next time? Sure. I really sometimes might take a long time to be like, I should have done this. I should have done that. What did I do wrong? Why, why, why? So the why question becomes very scary. Sure. Right? So I'm a firm believer that the question why is very important. Okay. The only problem is too much why, sure why? Yeah. just brings you this downward spiral. crisis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. That's a good segue uh, into the next segment, which is on solutions. Mm. Uh, because I think this is the focus of today. Uh, I want to kind of take things from a more personal perspective and of course bring in some research as well from, from your perspective. Uh, but I will kind of break it down. This is at least what I think are ways that people deal with it. Lah. Yeah. I mean, please, please correct me. But uh, I three things because you know, three things are easy to remember. But I think that every time people uh, ruminate, there yeah. are three ways to go about it. Number one is you can accept it, like accept the past. Uh, you slowly let it go. Okay, the second one is to process that thoughts and replace or reframe it in a way that allows you to move forward, like in a positive meaning to it. And I think the last one is to just suppress it. Mm. Yeah, so, um, and I guess, I guess we can talk about suppression first before we talk about the first two. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm trying to understand a little bit because I read up, but I don't sometimes, I mean, I understand, but I just yeah. hearing from you. What is suppression exactly? Sure. Yeah. Um, good question. I think suppression is like trying to put a lid on something okay. which is just going to overflow, right? right? So I would I would think like, you know, like the, the thing that people like to do, the Coke bottle, put the mentos yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And you just like, <laughs> right? So sure, imagine yeah. right now you really put the cap onto that and okay. you just refuse to let the Coke came out. It goes right. So suppression is a lot of time is that when we are actually going through something, yeah. we're going through a lot of like negative thoughts in our head, or we're going through a lot of negative emotions, instead of dealing with it, and how you deal with it is either like, talk it out with either therapists, or get help from friends, or okay. whatever. We just kind of like, I'm not going to deal with this, I'm just going to keep it in, keep Shh. it in, keep it in. So what happens is, the long, you kind of like, the longer you keep it in, it's becoming like a high pressure cooker. Right. Eventually the steam is going to come out, and sure. it's just going to like burst. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the way I read as well, like suppression is one of the worst ways to deal with any emotional struggle or mm. um, issues, right? Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to the rumination, because I'm trying to figure out like, is it, because is it, that suppression means just stop thinking about it because ruminating things, you keep thinking about it. All right. So in this context, like how you suppress, say, uh, ruminating thoughts, that means you don't address it. Mm. What, at least this is what I think. It's yeah. just that you don't process it, address it. You just kind of put a lid on it and you say that, okay, I'm not going to think about this, but it keeps coming back. Correct. So exactly like what you said. So you're not going to deal with it. Right. So the th- are the thoughts going to be still be there? Yes. Okay. Are you still going to be ruminating? Yes. But the suppression part comes when, instead of dealing with it, I'm just okay. not going to go down the track. I'm going to keep telling to myself, it's okay, it's okay. Mm. But you know, internally you're not. Right, but right. you're still going to be like, no, it's fine. It's okay. I'm, I'm still going to do this. I'm going to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But you're just like, internally you're just like, Ugh. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, uh, good. So I think all, definitely listeners now understand what are things that you might be, uh, uh, you know, that you might be aware of so that mm. you don't do it. So that's a great, now we're going to talk about solutions. So instead yeah. of suppressing it, uh, what can we do? Yeah. Uh, I guess let's talk about acceptance and I feel like I'm being a bit prescriptive here because I want you to be the subject matter expert. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but but uh, maybe I'll quote one guy. Yeah. One guy. Because I actually put it out there. I say, how do you stop ruminating yeah. on my stories? I think this response was very interesting. Okay. Hafiz, uh, he's actually a secondary school student. Yeah. He said, 
confronting it head on, mm. finding acceptance and eventually peace. Mm. And and I asked him like, how do you do that? Yeah. So he he told me this. He told me this, and he's quite a wise for his age, lah. Actually, he wrote that. You see, when we ruminate, we are stuck in the past. Uh-huh. We have not fully moved on. In other ways, we haven't processed it. And to confront it is to fully let the emotions, the memory of what we ruminate to flow and find peace. But the hardest part is to accept the pain. Uh. Um, and yeah, you reminded me of your, your wave analogy or so. He's going to take over my job now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's his personal experience. And then he said writing and meditation helps him. So mm. maybe let's talk about this concept of accepting. Uh, how do we do that? Yeah. I really like the two points you brought up because one yeah. is accepting, the other is processing, right? Yeah. And I think that when we talked about it, it's actually like, that's like step one and then step ah, two, okay. right? So let's go to step one, which is accepting, which is the hardest thing, to be honest. Okay. Uh, because what's happening is that you're actually telling to yourself that, okay, I have an issue and my issue is I constantly think. Sure. And I'm thinking in a very unhealthy way. And with that comes along your, your feelings about it right. as well, you see? And, and like what Hafiz wrote as well. It's one thing to think about it, but the next thing you need to start dealing with as well, or you need to learn to accept yeah. is the feelings that come along with it. Right. And it's not a nice thing to do, right? right like right. who wants to actually go down that route and be like, okay, time to confront it. So I think I believe in confrontation. I think it needs to be done um, with kindness okay. and with gentleness. Okay. There is an element of strength. The strength is to take the first step. Mm. but the process of going about you need to be kind and gentle okay because if you're going to go on full on strength uh we miss the plot okay it's it, it's not a strength issue it's more of a can you be nice to yourself okay because we i think we are so good at being nice to other people that when we actually take some time to be nice to ourselves we really struggle with that yeah maybe being too hard on yourself is also like a symptom of rumination or rather vice versa mm. um I want to share my personal experience with this as well because when you talked about it, it reminded me of the time where I ruminated the most. Mm-hmm. I think that was during after my A-levels. I just couldn't accept mm. that I got a U. Mm. I couldn't accept that I would get anything less than straight A's. Mm. So that led to a depressive episode and during the episode, every day I was ruminating about the past and what could have been. Yeah. And it lasted for months, right? It was a huge struggle. I think go listen to this podcast they might know me because they've listened to previous episodes if not you guys can go and listen to that episode but the way I kind of dealt with that and how the ruminating thought stopped Mm. was when I made a fundamental shift in the way I think Mm. and accepting that that is is fine Mm. that my life is going to be okay even though I did not get straight A's Mm. so for me that turning point was the acceptance was definitely there Mm. and changing the way I fundamentally thought about about myself and my esteem. Mm. Yeah. So I'm just sharing that with the audience to just because that really like kind of congruent with what you mentioned. Kevin, if you so, don't mind me asking, yeah. what brought you to that place of change? What happened? Wow. Yeah. To summarize it, I think it's three factors. I think professional help probably helped. Yeah. I opened up to seeing a counselor and then I think she helped me process certain of my emotions. Yeah. Help me understand why I'm feeling a certain way. Uh, me- medication as well I do believe la, yeah. it helped to, to kind of alleviate some of the thoughts social support is extremely important yeah. parents did not understand fully but they empathized with me yeah. uh, one or two close friends as well and I think the biggest was volunteering mm. so when I volunteered fundamentally I realized that the people who treated me mm. regardless of whether I get straight A's or straight F's right, they treated me with respect mm. and because I was there serving them they gave me that love in return. Then I realized that my value is not just dependent on my grades. I had inherent value. So that fundamental shift in thought process and paradigm actually helped me to stop ruminating. Because because my rumination was based on the fact that I'm not worthy enough. (laughs) You know, that I'll never amount to much in life. So I think for me, that processing and really shifting my my core beliefs uh, was powerful for me. Thanks for sharing, man. Really, really appreciate it. And I just want to like really take that yeah. uh, and amplify that because what we see that is sometimes when we talk about acceptance, yeah. we want to accept something by ourselves, but we don't see it yet. Okay. So sometimes you need someone else to articulate that for us. Right. You know, someone else needs to say that, you know, like even though you are you have gone through this and this is what you've done, you are still good. Sure. There is still so much to you. And when we see that, we take that, um, that's when we come to a place of acceptance. Okay. I love it. Um, 
I mean, I guess that's a more underlying factors involved in acceptance. Mm. But I guess we can also talk about practical tips, mm. at least for to bring us back in the present. I think what I read was that uh, grounding yeah. could be one way meditation. I mean, that's a form of medita- uh, mindfulness practice. Uh, but could you explain, do you know what grounding is? Yeah. I do believe, you know, you can yeah. explain to the audience how that possibly sure. helps. So like grounding literally, like the word talks about in terms of like, you put yourself in the here and now, right. which is like being in the present. Um, one of the ways that people do that is, so what happens is like, we talk about rumination, we talk about being in the past, right? Yeah. So what grounding does, it kind of puts you in the present and we call it the five, four, three, two, one. So it really can go like, mm. what are like the, um, you can go something along the line, like what are the five things you, you can see, see yeah. the four things you can smell, the three things you can touch, the two sure. things you can taste, the one thing you know you can right. hear. Uh, and it can just kind of like goes down that track. And when yeah. that happens, what you're doing is, even though you know you're like going this chaos that's happening within you, yeah. you are forcing in a way or presenting yourself an opportunity to feel, see, touch, hear, and be in the present. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think that helps get out from the past in some that, sense. That helps you to balance, to know there's an alternative. Mm. So it may not necessarily help you to get out of the past yet, mm. but what happens is it makes you know that there is an alternative. Okay. Now there's two realities. Okay. Not just the one you're living on the inside. There's an external reality as well. Sure. Personally, I have not practiced this in depth, mm. but I think the reason why I was interested in it or really uh, delved into it is because even now, yeah. I don't ruminate as much anymore yeah. because I think I've kind of passed that stage really. But there are times where I'm stuck in the past or I cannot bring my awareness to the present. Mm you know, whether it's intrusive thoughts or whatever. So this is something that I'm looking to explore as well because sometimes it gets uh, frustrating like, when you are, you're doing your work and then yeah. <laughs> you start ruminating, yeah. you start thinking about things. So I think uh, we won't really delve deep into this, but if you want to, I guess you all can go and research about this. Like, uh, what is it about? Uh, and what mindfulness is about yeah. as well. Uh, but I want to transition to talking about processing and replacing and reframing, which I think is your expertise as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, how can... You know, some, if you're ruminating, how can you go to the next step, like Hafi said, to, to confront it and, you know, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think one of the things we want to do is we do understand that there's a reason why the rumination is there, right? Okay. And I call this, it's a, one of my favorite things I like to do because I do it for myself. It's called the worry time. Okay. Which means I literally set 10 minutes a day sometimes <laughs> to just ruminate and worry, like just get it off your system. Okay. Because it ain't going to run away from you, right? Like sure. if you're going to suppress it, you're still going to be there. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to not learn to control it, it's just going to overflow. Sure. So I give myself like 10 minutes sometimes, 15 minutes, just be like, just okay, think. go and worry. Worry all you want. Okay. You know, just worry and worry and worry for the 10 that's, minutes. That's interesting. To your heart's content. And then after that, just put that worry as like, literally put the worry aside because I just asked myself this question, which would be, now, what do I need to do to make sure that I just ruminate a bit less? Okay. So what am I doing is I'm shifting then to a actionable step. And that step is so powerful because it's making it's making me understand that yes, I gave time to ruminate. Mm. So like the little ruminator in me is like, yeah, hey, I've done that. Now what can I do to make sure I just ruminate a bit less? Okay. Tell me, talk to me about that. Yeah. And what can people do after that? So it could just be a lot of times is if different people have different type of actionable steps, one of the things you could do is I always find it very helpful is write it down. Mm. write down what are the things that you can do sure. uh, to not ruminate. That means like maybe you need a structure. So one of the things about the rumination is that it's internal chaos, mm. right? And because it's internal chaos, it looks big. Sure. But when you actually write down what you're ruminating about and then you write down your actionable steps beside it, what can you do? Mm. It's actually not as big as what you're it was inside. Love it. You externalize those thoughts on paper. Like, get right. it out of your mind. That's right. And it's okay. good to do that because when you write it down, there is actually a tangible process that's happening. Mm. It is no longer just this mystical thing within you right. that has this heaviness. It has now taken on, on a form called words, a sentence, mm. and it's actually not that big anymore. And you can also see your biases or thought processes on paper. It's easier to challenge them. Correct. So well. when you do that, and then you say, okay, like maybe like one of the rubination could be for someone yeah. is that, oh, I didn't do well enough. Why did I not do well enough in my studies? And you kind of like keep on writing about it or sure. writing the work. Then we just write the next step, right? Now, you put on a header and just write, now what can I do better? Okay. And when you actually write down the actionable step, immediately what happens is that's when the confrontation comes. Mm. How so? You know that this is your rumination on your left and on your right, you know this is the actionable step. 
Now, okay. what choice do you want to take? Love it. I think that that reminds me of the reflection framework that I also help students with. It's like what, so what, and now what, mm. right? It's what happened, why did it happen, right? You talk about your beliefs, talk about certain reasons that led to it. Yeah. And then the next thing is what can I do about it? What steps can I take to either reframe my beliefs or, you know, move forward from there? Yeah. So, wow, I think that's, that's great. <laughs> that's really great. Uh, we are, I guess, coming towards the end, really, of this short but informative episode. Oh. <laughs> uh, but is there any other, you know, things or tips you have for people who are ruminating? Mm. Yeah. Um, In terms of processing, I guess, like, and replacing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think for replacing, one of the things I would definitely talk about is, I really like your story, and I yeah. think that's where it comes from, which is like, we tend to ruminate a lot because we unable to accept certain things about yourself. Sure. Right? So I think it's to finding the balance is, is to also list down and start writing down, talking about even getting other people to talk it to you. What are the things you're also good at? Mm. Because that's where the reframing happens, you see? Because when you ruminate, we tend to ruminate but I mean, nobody ruminates about food stuff. Right? <laughs> we just tend to ruminate about <laughs> sure, bad sure. stuff. Right? So it's called rumination. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if then you have someone else or if you are also able to write the positive things, the mm. things that are working well, okay. even if it's just a 0 0.1. Right. What happens is we shift from a ruminated view to a balanced view. Right. Because now yeah. we see there's one reality, we shift to two realities. Okay. And I think it's so important to actually take that step of writing it down or even getting someone to talk it to you and just make sure that it's a tangible thing that you can hold on to. Okay. That, that's an, an, another amazing, I know I've used the word amazing way too often. But I, I do mean it because I, I Angela Dartworth also said in one of the podcasts that uh, we tend to, when we set goals or when we move forward, we tend only to look at what's the bad stuff that happened and then we correct that. But we don't necessarily look at what's good. Yeah. We don't reflect on what's good. That's also important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Because you want to double down on that and you also to acknowledge and be kind to yourself as well. Yeah. I think that that perspective we gave is very important for listeners as well. When you reflect, also write down what do you like about yourself? Right. What's working? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that I do is whenever yeah. I do an activity uh, when I'm working with like volunteers or whatever, I take time to make sure the first question I ask is what did we do well? Mm. And what happens is more often than not, people will respond like, yeah, we did this well, but blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, no, 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 no. I'll be like, let's not go down that route. Sure. Just, I just only want to hear what do we do well. And people struggle. Yeah, yeah. People actually are so in tune to talk about everything that needs to be changed mm. that they actually struggle to talk about what they did well. Okay. And once we give them the time and then after we talk about what they need to do better, mm. you realize it's such a huge shift. They'll be like, okay, la, I mean, no, yeah, not it's, so it's bad, not that bad. Right? Bad, like, okay. so much good has happened as well. Love it. Okay, I think I think that's a good conclusion to this episode. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much again, Andrew. Like oh, really? this is a like I said, really the one of the best people to talk about this. Uh, if y'all enjoyed this episode, please reach out. How can people find you on Instagram? I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think I just. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will link. I will link you up, and also I think you have a page. Yeah. Uh, so like this is the page that uh, a colleague of mine uh, and I started. It's yeah. called Bio Psych. Okay. Um, and it's really literally we started the project of this like. Instagram page purely because of the fact it was doing circuit breaker. Yeah. A lot of people just needed help. We wanted to make sure that there were informative steps on what people can do. Just mini self-help steps. Sure. Uh, we have not been put a post in a while. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, we've been very, uh, both of us are studying. <laughs> but yeah, I know, we're really busy, but it's yeah. okay. Okay, look at past ones also very, yeah. very informative. You can just like contact us and we can see what happened from there. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Thanks, no uh, Andrew. Uh, you guys, uh, I guess, can subscribe and uh, wait for the next episode. Uh, we know we are, we are really working hard to expand this podcast and if it is of value to you, uh, do share with your friends or even on Instagram and tag us as well. Okay, till the next episode. See y'all. Bye. Bye.